Hello YouTube. Today we're going to take the Ryobi P745 Tough Tunes Radio and we're going to upgrade it with some high-end certified for marine use Polk speakers, model DB401. This Ryobi radio takes four inch speakers and we're going to upgrade them to some better ones. So let's do it. Here's the real Be Tough Tunes. If you want to know what I think about it, check out my other video where I did a review on it. Okay, things you're going to need for this project are a screwdriver that is really long and skinny. I use this one. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm going to use a fatter one to get the roll cage off because that doesn't need the skinny style. Roll cage is just uh, eight screws. Important to note though that uh, it, it doesn't just go on either way. It can't go flipping like this, it can't go backwards. Um, so before you start, you may actually want to like put a label on here, something that points to front. Uh, I know which way is which and I can explain it. Um, so I'm not gonna bother doing that step right now. So we have uh, four screws that we need to remove. One, two, three, four, on each side, one, two, three, four, so eight screws total, let's do it. here that's holding on. There we go. One's just, there's one that's still hanging on. That should be it. Yep. There you have it. Free of cage. Guess this is a good opportunity to show you the difference between the front and back of the roll cage. There are larger bumps here, here, and here than there are on this side. These are shaved. These two are shaved lower than these two, and 
Additionally, same kind of goes for the top where these are a little bit fatter than these. So the fatter side, which will be this side, fat, 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 goes in the, goes in the back. So we'll cross that bit bridge when we get to it. Feels like this is well, I'll tighten this all down when I'm done. Cage removed. Okay, the only screws that we're gonna need to remove here, six screws in the back. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this is where you need a very skinny screwdriver to get in there. You try to use a standard one like this, just not deep enough. You're just gonna hit. It won't go deep enough. So, you're gonna need this. Feels like that's good. Four. Feels good. See if I'm free yet. Maybe there's some screws we need to get rid of here. Oh yeah. There's one hiding behind this door. We need to go right here. There we go. There we go. That's releasing a lot of tension. So don't forget that one behind the door like I did. Bang. Make sure it's the same size before I lose track. Indeed, so that can go in there. Hey, now we're gonna be in business. Attention on these. Just taking my time. Wish 
wish I didn't have to use this tiny screwdriver. Wish I had a fatter handle to work with here, but got to go with what I have. This one's skinny enough to use. Oh, sure. Nice. Oh, well, that's so much easier. My fingers. Hey, success. Okay. Our speakers are in the front of the unit. But, of course, there's wiring connecting the front to the back, so we have to be careful about disconnecting these here. Here's how it looks on the inside. And there's a whole heck of a lot connecting the front to the back. So I don't think that I'm going to separate these. Let me just take a look. See how feasible it really is. Most of the tension... Yup. Most of the tension is here. I could pull these cords and do it. I think I will. So I'm not sure if you can see in there, but we have a lot of tension pulling here. So I'm gonna disconnect that. We have tension pulling here. I'm gonna disconnect that. And these are just pull out. They don't have to, there's no tab to release. You can just pull them out. Let's see if that gives us enough freedom. Um, and here. Is that going to get us? Oh no, we've got a situation over here. I'm not going to release that one, but this should at least get us viewing our speakers that we want to replace. Let me see the best way to angle this so that the camera can see it. Okay, there are our speakers. And let's see where these speakers plug in. They are soldered at the bottom and then they go into protective housing and they are actually glued and plugged in onto a board here. So I'm going to have to pull them off, pull the connectors off of these speakers and solder them onto the new speakers. No problem. Okay. Gosh, that's a lot of tension. Maybe I can... Is that glued? I think it is. Yeah, so Ryobi's gluing these in place, some of them. The ones, obviously, that I already pulled weren't. I could just disconnect them, but um, several of them are glued. Let's take a look at our new speakers. And make sure they look like they're going to be a good fit. Some really sweet grills, which I'm probably not going to be able to use. Sweet. Look like exactly what I need. Bang! I'm gonna upgrade these. Alright. And I'm gonna have to solder and get these out of the bag so I can show the camera. Right now what we have in the radio are four-inch speakers, just like these. 
that have soldered wires right on these two on our positive and negative. So we're going to have to, actually they're I think right here, solder to these points. So I'm going to heat them up, pull them off, and then solder them to these new speakers. Okay. Not a good fit. Eh, not as good as this. Oh, I was wrong. It's a better fit. Now, these speakers that I'm removing are 8 ohm, 12 watts. So, the new ones are actually 4 ohm, and they'll handle up to 45 watts. But by putting in 4 ohm instead of 8, it's going to double the power. They're going to should be twice as loud. Now, there are some dangers with that as far as frying out the amp and the radio if I keep it at high power because I'm basically doubling the power that I'm driving these at but I'm not scared that's what modding's about gotta take a little risk and good luck finding marine or car stereo speakers that are 8 ohm pretty much everything's 4 so unless I got some cheapy ones like the ones that come in the, this you're stuck with four ohm. Which, like I said, I should end up getting a heck of a lot more power out of them anyway. Okay, here we go. Old speaker out. And hopefully you can see these are soldered. They're soldered onto these little wings here. So I'm gonna heat up that solder and carefully pull that off. I'm not sure how well that's gonna film. If I'm gonna keep that um, in the video or not, I'm not sure. But uh, I'll get the other one out and then uh, I'll heat up the soldering iron and go from there. Actually, better take these four screws that came with the speakers. Put them in my bowl so I don't lose them. Some junky foam paper cone speakers that Ryobi decided to put in. I got these bad boys because I care about sound quality. I didn't really, I'm not even using this thing as a job site radio. I'm just going to be using it to listen to music in the backyard on the beach. So it's much more important to me as a, as a player than it is as a battery charger or radio. So, worth the investment to me to upgrade this. And that's the last speaker, the last cord. Oh boy, thanks RYOB for giving me, hot gluing this wire down, giving me no room to work with. I'm going to have to solder it right down into there very, very tight. Right. Now, note on this speaker we have red, black in the center, and white over here on the other side. I'm going to do the same thing when I solder these. Our negative is our Okay, I'm trying to get it so the camera can see. 
Our negative is white, bang. Our positive is red. Here, we'll go over here. And then this center, ground, go in the center. I'm just gonna have to solder those in there. All right, let's heat up the soldering iron. And I'm going to cut the video here while I get that stuff ready. Okay, so I already soldered um, one of the speakers in. It was going to be the harder one to get a camera shot of. So I did that uh, with the camera off. But I have my um, soldering iron heated up here. Um, and I'm going to attempt to show you how to replace um, the one speaker. And then uh, you guys can figure it out for the other one by just seeing how I did one. So, there are a lot of videos out there on YouTube on how to solder. I'm not going to uh, turn this into a tutorial on soldering, but I do want to show as much as I can about this process. So, all I really need to do is heat up the existing solder that Ryobi used on the speaker and then pull each wire off. So I'm gonna heat the tip of um, this white wire and then that should just pop right off and then do it for the black in the center and the red on the right. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Hopefully we can get a camera shot of it. Really soldered on there good. There we go. Got the white to release. Do the same for the black. Now I don't want to, um, this is a, important to note, with my iron in there, I don't want to get it close to this white wire or the red. I don't want to melt the housing on the wires. I just want to melt the solder and remove the wires from the old speakers. Starting to get a little warmer and should release here. This one's on there really good. Lots of solder. All right. Released. Now we have Two of the three done. Now for the positive wire. I just want to be able to grab this red wire. Heat up the speaker post. Should be enough. There we go. Just that simple. Here are the old Chinsey speakers that come with the unit. And as you can see, I think you can see, there is very little wire to work with here. I'm talking an inch for each of these colors uh, because they glued it with hot glue right here. So I, you know, I could be easier on myself, I'd go easy on myself, I guess, and uh, rip off that hot glue, give myself more slack to work with, but it's not that difficult to get in there. I'm just going to keep it how it is. And I wish you guys could uh, feel the difference here. I mean, these speakers are just not even comparable. Not even comparable. I mean, this is what Ryobi's using is really flimsy, lightweight, lightweight junk. And these polks are obviously awesome. So, just need to solder these on here. Do one wire at a time. 
course, one, one solder at a time. I hope that I can get this captured on camera. But if not, I won't use this footage. I'll see you later. If it worked. I'm going to do the red wire first. I'm actually going to wrap the wire around the post a little bit so it's hanging on really well before I take solder to it. That way I can use two hands to do my solder. One for the soldering wire and one for the iron. That should work just great. And you just heat up the wire and the post that I want to solder to. Common mistake with uh, people soldering is they heat the solder and then try to drip it onto what they're soldering, but that won't work. You need to heat the surfaces you want to solder to and then touch the solder to it. got it on the front and now I'm going to get it on the back because I have the wire going through the hole of the terminal. Probably not good for you to inhale this. There we go. And I just want to give it a little tug. Oh boy, yeah, that's on there really good. Awesome. Okay, so the red one's done. Let's see if I can zoom in better. Okay. And onto the black, into in the center. Okay, I've removed the old speakers by heating up the solder and pulling off the wires and soldered in the new speakers with the red wire on the positive contact, the black wire, the black wire on the center contact, and the white wire on the negative contact. Now all that's left is to plug all these wires back in where they were and screw everything together. wish my screwdriver was a little bit more magnetized. So 
Like I have some magnetized ones right here. Awesome. Now I opted for the Marine Certified Polk DB401s, 401s, because this is supposed to be a durable job site radio. But doing the reviews, you're not making any sacrifices by going with the Marines. People are using these uh, in their cars as well where marine uh, certification is not necessary because they're just one of the best foreign speakers out there. Getting the uh, speaker screw started is challenging. They don't have like a point to get them started, plus the speakers are magnetized, so it sucks the screwdriver or the speaker or the uh, screw to the speaker edge. So I apologize for how much time that was taking me. Okay, finally done with that part. Now getting these 
two pieces together is going to require moving slowly because I'm going to have to plug in all the ribbons and connectors and everything that I unplugged in this process. And doing so with regards to the camera is just going to further complicate things. Okay, and I see one more. Where are you? Here it is. Make sure everything's solid in there because being a job site radio, you're going to want it to be able to handle some vibration. And I'm just checking all my connectors with my flathead push, pushing down. Everything's tight in there. Good deal. Speaker connections are all good. And the last step Let me get this back together. Make sure that that cord isn't being pinched. The cord over here being pinched. That's clear. Okay, I think we're good for the most part. And I'm just going to do these in reverse order. which was my feet, screws first, everything should just feel nice, no seams, no seams between the green and the black parts, and there aren't. Seams are going to be an issue. You don't want dust and sand or anything getting into this since it's supposed to be a job site radio. Ruggedized. Now we have the screws that we need the long screwdriver for. There should be
believe, seven of those. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and then the one that's hidden behind the door. Right here. I'm going to go through and get them all started. Make sure that there are no pinches or anything. And then go through and tighten them down after the fact. Okay, now I'm going to go through and do the final tightening of all seven. Run them nice and tight, and with a screwdriver this little of a handle, I don't really have to worry about stripping them because they hurt my fingers so much that I don't have enough strength and durability in my fingers to be able to strip them.
great. That's it. Make sure the feet are super tight too. They are. And finally, the roll cage. Now, what I said at the beginning about the roll cage is, this side, bigger, 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 compared to this side, smaller, 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 smaller. You need to have the biggers in the back, like I said at the beginning of the video. That means it's gonna go like this. Boom. I suggest working from the bottom up. You're gonna to have to have a, um, a hand under it while the other hand is screwing them in. And I just always do the same technique of getting them started. And then I'll come back through and really tighten them up. Everything should line up, look straight, look level. If it doesn't, then most likely your problem is those sets that, that you didn't that you have the front and the back reverse. You gotta flip the roll cage. That is pretty much the only thing that can go wrong with this. And then, once I get this all dialed down, tightened in, we just have to verify operation, make sure it charges, make sure it runs off battery, make sure the auxiliary input works, make sure the display works, the volume control works, which is the on button as well. Because if not, we gotta take it apart again and find out what came disconnected. I'm not going to do the music, test the music on camera because I don't want YouTube to flag it as having copyrighted material. So I'll do that on my own time.
Awesome. There you have it. Upgraded P745 Ryobi Tough Tunes job site radio. Thanks everybody for watching. Please click like, subscribe to me on YouTube, and I'll keep the technical videos coming.